Good day to you my fellow endoskeletons, I'm Kenator and welcome back for another Starbase progress report. We're on week 23 of 2020 and if you're new here I bring you the latest news and updates of everything Starbase every Monday. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss out. Now let's get to it. Our Lowry quote of the week this week is on factories. These seem to be coming along nicely and will be first buildable on lots and more lots will be made available to use when they are ready as well. Some of the same tech used for factories will also be used in ship repairing from a blueprint. So expect to see more on both of these items in the coming weeks as well as later on in this video, so stay tuned. Now onto the progress report. The main design features worked on last week were a redesign for the mining backpack has been made. There are now more slots for items. All mass and carry limits have been tested in the mining job for possible issues. New instructions have been added to all assembly job workstations. Economy and terminals have been added to the new infantry arena. Fixes and configurations to the economy are being worked on. Design for player to player trade functions are continued to be worked on as well. Design worked on for trade UI changes, player credits moved and standard credit filled. Trade safety features, messaging and errors are being worked on. In-game chat whisper logic has been updated to work better with new player names. And shop item description should now correctly show keybinds if an item has keybind info written in the description. For station design this week, we have floor lights have been added to the asteroid mining job workstations. All storage towers have been relocated in stations Capital Imperial, the Empire Outpost and the Kingdom Outpost. The marketplace landing platforms are now reserved for landing only. Ships can be spawned in the takeoff docks. An issue where some lot designer modules can't be placed in their corresponding lot area sizes is being worked on. A mini station U has been changed in preparation for an upcoming battle event. In spaceship design, we have player made ships have been added to the marketplace and to the economy. We have the Aphelios made by TGS and we have the Mule made by Ockham. These are the first player made ships that have got into the actual store that you can walk around and big congratulations to those guys. The Anubis ship is now available in the ship showroom as well. The Anubis has been a little bit bugged on previous implementations to the closed alpha and we still don't have access to it yet so I still look forward to getting my hands on it. And pre-made ships have been updated due to a durability fix. Now onto the gameplay updates. The fixing tool only highlighting each targeted hologram once has been fixed. Issues with the headlamp lighting up equipped tools excessively has been fixed. Headlamp lights staying in the scene after the player exits has also been fixed. An issue where the headlamp keybind getting bound twice when resetting all binds to defaults has been fixed as well. Headlamps don't cause visual syncing to other players anymore. Programmable progress bar panels having empty variable name field name by default has been fixed. Server support for player to player trading has been partially implemented. An issue caused by resource networks has been fixed. Cables and pipes are now destroyed when grabbing a part of a structure connected by them alone. We have some durability fixes with frame beams no longer created by two connections to only one other beam and beams connected to thruster bases are validated more accurately. Durability warnings added for otherwise valid non-frame beams. Durability visualization adjusts exposure. Auto bolter support has been added for non-orthogonal beams. That would be the 30 degree beams that have not been working so far. So great job on fixing that one pretty quickly. Lifeline now stuns warped players for a short time, during in which they can only sit into chairs. And regular point snapping has been optimized so that it can be used with the larger objects. For our UI update this week, we have rendering and dragging have been added for slots in the trade area. An issue with swapping between crate slots and station storage has been fixed. Items now show up in the correct size in the trade grid. Dragged items now disappear in source inventories. A check for space has been added for offered items. Request trade option has been added to the social tab context menu. Trade window will now open and close for both players. And ellipse, line and freeform tools have been added to the feedback tools screenshot editor. Starship creator updates this week are rotate tool, tick amount and rotation speed settings have been added to the tool options. 
Move tool, unrestricted movement with camera setting has been added to the tool options window as well. The snap tool, snap tool lock time setting has been added to the tool options window. Scene saving and loading while MUUS is currently active has been prevented. An issue where the file open pre-made blueprint unexpectedly opens a remote blueprint dialog if the current scene is empty has been fixed. Missing localized values have been added to the save error pop-up when the user attempts to save an invalid scene. Lot terminal blueprint controls have been hidden from non-admins. Rotate tool, move tool and snap tool settings have been added to the tool options window and an issue that prevented the rotation and sometimes move tool from being used after switching tools has been fixed. Animation changes this week are unarmed run walk strafe animation has changed. Affected animations are being worked on so they correctly work with the new strafe. Crouch stop animations have been polished, rifle crouch stop animations are in the making, and clap and mid-air death animations are also in the making. For station R updates we have first version of holograms added to the capital imperial station. All storage towers have been updated, four color variants made with the lights added. The barricade tape decals have been deleted from multiple decorative station objects. LOD mesh and textures in small design workshop lounge areas have been updated. Both small and large ship design workshops far LODs have been updated. Unnecessary interior windows removed and texture and tint masks have been changed. Textures and tint masks for both the small and large asteroid collection halls far LODs have also been updated. LOD and far LOD have been added for the hall module prospector shop 1A. The tow map has been updated, brightness increased specifically in darker areas. Spaceship designers work area decorations have been updated. Proper textures have been added for the remote explosive. Sharp L-sized rocks for asteroids have been made. A total of 35 ice asteroids have been created. The weapon effect of the laser rifle has been improved. Lights have been removed from projectiles and weapon hit effects. And icons have been updated and added for the following tools. The building tool, pipe tool, cable tool, welding tool, bolt tool and the saw tool. Our feature video this week is repairing a ship in space from its blueprint. This is currently in testing but will project from your universal tool and provide you a cool new way to help put your ship back together after either a crash or combat damage, providing you have the resources to do so. A quick reminder if you do get into closed alpha, be sure to send any funny or awesome clips and recordings my way for a chance to get featured on the channel. And as always, please smash that like button, share the video with your friends and faction, leave a comment with any questions you want answers to, and I will see you in the next one. Kenator, out.